What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you are going to learn about TCP and UDP ports, protocols, and their purposes. What is a communication protocol? A communication protocol is a system of rules that allow two or more entities of a communication system to transmit information via any kind of variation of a physical quantity. The protocol defines the rules, syntax, semantics, and synchronization of communication and possible error recovery methods. Protocols may be implemented by hardware, software, or a combination of both. Protocols are designed to allow for applications to send and receive data via predefined ports on a network adapter to make connections to another computer. Port numbers on computers are used to identify protocols for the purpose of sorting various processes. For example, if you want to visit technologyg.com, you would open a browser and type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.technologyg.com. Com. The Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, is what is being used to make a connection to the web server technologyg.com. For the transmission of data, HTTP selects an unused outbound port on your computer to send and receive data to and from the web server technologyg.com. On the technologyg.com web server, port 80, which is also an inbound port corresponding to HTTP, is open at all times to allow for a computer to make a connection to the technologyg.com web server. TCP. So transmission control protocol is one of the main protocols of the internet protocol suite. It originated in the initial network implementation in which it complemented the internet protocol, therefore being commonly referred to as TCP IP. TCP provides reliable, ordered, and error-checked delivery of bytes between applications running on hosts communicating via an IP network. TCP is connection-oriented, and a connection between a client and a server is established before data can be sent, which requires every packet that has been sent to be checked for delivery. Packets that are transmitted to a receiving computer are not received. The receiving computer cannot assemble the message, and therefore the sending computer has to retransmit the missing packets. For example, if a computer sends a picture of a car, but for some reasons the picture is missing the parts of the image that displays the tires, TCP will instruct the sending computer to retransmit the missing data for the proper assembly of the image. UDP, User Datagram Protocol, is one of the core members of the internet protocol suite. With UDP, computer applications can send messages, also known as datagrams, to other hosts on an IP network. Prior communication is not required to set up communication channels or data paths. UDP uses a simple connectionless communication model with a minimum of protocol mechanisms. UDP provides checksums for data integrity and port numbers for addressing different functions at the source and destination of the datagram. It has no handshaking dialogues like TCP and thus exposes the user program to any unreliability of the un underlying network, meaning there is no guarantee of delivery, ordering, or duplicate protection. Voice over IP and streaming media sessions, they use UDP in addition to simple queries and responses such as DNS. TCP versus UDP example. So an example of TCP can be thought of in terms of pre-recorded videos on YouTube like the one you're currently watching. A pre-recorded video, also known as a stored video, is a video that has already been uploaded to YouTube and is sitting on a YouTube server somewhere. When a person uses their computer to send out a request to watch this pre-recorded video, TCP engages in what is known as a three-way handshake where the client computer says to the YouTube server, hey, I would like to watch this video. 
This is known as SYN or S-Y-N or synchronized. Basically, the computer is telling the YouTube server that they would like to establish a connection. The YouTube server responds back by saying, hello, how are you? I have that video. Would you like to watch it? This is known as SYN act or synchronized acknowledgement. And this is where YouTube tells the other computer or asks the other computer if they would like to establish a connection. The client computer responds back by saying, yes, I I would like to watch that video. This is known as the acknowledgement. This is the client computer saying that they wish to proceed with the establishment of that connection. The YouTube server then quote unquote sends over the video in its entirety. If there is a disruption in the transmission of that video from the YouTube server to the client computer, which is also known as buffering, then the three way handshake would have to start over again at each break to ensure that each packet associated with the video has been sent from YouTube to the client so that you can watch the complete video in its entirety. An example of UDP would be the live streaming of a video on YouTube. A YouTuber is live streaming on their channel. You decide to tune in to the live stream. During the live stream, portions of the live stream go in and out for a few seconds at a time, and then things go back to quote unquote normal, picking up where the live streamer is currently at during the live broadcast. When it comes to UDP, the live stream is not engaging in a three-way handshake to ensure that you, the client computer, have received all the missing parts of the video. With UDP, the live stream just continues to send out data packets without checking to see if you received the packets. TCP, it continually checks to make sure you received all the packets so you won't have to miss a few seconds here and there like you would during a live stream UDP transmission. If TCP were used during a live stream, every time the live stream would go in and out, TCP would have to reestablish that three-way handshake at whatever point in time the live stream went out. You would have to wait for YouTube to resend that missing information before you could proceed with the live stream, which would mean you would not be watching the video live. You would actually be a few seconds to maybe a few minutes behind from where the actual YouTuber is in the live stream. Now, in the examples that I just gave, each protocol served a very unique purpose. UDP is the better choice for time sensitive information, even though it is less reliable than TCP. In other situations where reliability is important, TCP is beneficial. When it comes to establishing a connection, remember that it's the inbound ports that you are connected with on a server. And here is a screenshot of some common protocols and their ports. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. You want to retain this to memory because I can pretty much guarantee you that you will be tested on this when you go to sit down and take your examination. All right, so for the rest of the video, we're gonna be talking about various protocols in a little bit more detail as it relates to the ones that you just saw on that chart. So the first one you have is called FTP or file transfer protocol. The file transfer protocol is a standard network protocol used for the transfer of computer files between a client and a server on a network computer. FTP is also used by web browsers to access an FTP site you would use the prefix FTP colon forward slash forward slash. Windows, Linux, and Mac, they contain a command line FTP program. You would type FTP, press enter, and then type help at the FTP prompt to see the commands that you should be able to use. FTP sites with downloads available to any user support anonymous FTP. Anonymous FTP is a means by which archive sites allow general access to their archives and information. These sites create a special account called Anonymous. User Anonymous has limited rights to the archive host as well as some operating restrictions. Some FTP sites require the user to log in with a specified username and password. One drawback to FTP is that it is not considered secure due to FTP login credentials being transmitted and authenticated in clear text. To increase security, use FTP secured with SSL slash TLS or FTPS. 
SFTS or Secure File Transfer Protocol, SFTP. And also remember, FTP, it uses port 21. SSH, Secure Shell, is a cryptographic network protocol for operating network services securely over an unsecured network. SSH is more secure than FTP and Telnet. Typical applications include remote command line, login, and remote command execution, but any network service can be secured with SSH. SSH servers housing data a client wants to retrieve. It utilizes port 22, and it would need to have that port open to get access to that data. As previously mentioned, regular FTP is an insecure port, whereas secure FTP is secure by way of utilizing TCP port 22 as it runs over an SSH session. Telnet is an application protocol used on the internet or local area network to provide a bi-directional interactive text-oriented communication facility using a virtual terminal connection. A Telnet emulation enables a user to connect to a remote host or device using a Telnet client over port 23. A Telnet connection allows for a user to Telnet into a computer that hosts their website to manage their files remotely versus simply downloading pages and files as he or she would with an HTTP colon forward slash forward slash or FTP colon forward slash forward slash connection. Before a Telnet connection from a client can be established, a remote computer must already be configured to accept a Telnet login on port 23, and that port must be open before a login can take place. To utilize the Telnet command prompt on a Windows or Linux computer by way of a command line Telnet program, you would have to open a connection to a remote computer followed by opening a command prompt in Windows or a terminal session in Linux and then type Telnet and press enter. For help with commands, you would simply type help and press the enter key. Telnet has been removed from recent versions of Mac due to the standard practice of using SSH, but if Telnet is still needed, it is possible to install it. SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, is a communication protocol for email transmission. SMTP utilizes port 25 to send email from a client system to an email server, which also uses SMTP to relay messages to the receiving email server. To configure email settings on a client device, you would have to check with the ISP or the organization that provides internet access for the settings, such as the server type, whether you're going to use SMTP, POP3, or IMAP. You're going to need to get the settings for the ports that are going to be used. You're going to need the username and the password in order to get access to the servers. And you're going to need to know the security settings, whether or not they are using SSH. DNS, so domain name system is a hierarchical and decentralized naming system for computers, services, or other resources connected to the internet or a private network. It associates various information with domain names assigned to each of the participating entities. Most prominently, it translates more readily memorized domain names to numerical IP addresses, which are needed for locating and identifying computer services and devices with the underlying network protocols. In other words, DNS can be thought of as being the phone book of the internet. Instead of memorizing IP addresses to get to a website such as Google, one could simply type in the URL or the uniform resource locator, aka the web address bar. They would just simply type in google.com and the DNS will match that name up to the IP address associated with google.com to take your client to buy to Google. When manually configuring an IP address, you typically provide the IP address of a DNS server or the IP address of multiple DNS servers as part of the configuration process. DNS uses port 53. Some texts refer to DNS as either domain name service or domain name server, which is not all the way technically correct, but it is understood in the industry with other IT professionals.
HTTP and HTTPS. So Hypertext Transfer Protocol is an application protocol for distributed collaborative hypermedia information systems. HTTP is the foundation of data communications for the World Wide Web, where hypertext documents include hyperlinks to other resources that the user can easily access, for example, by a mouse click or by tapping the screen in a web browser. HTTP is used by all major Major web browsers such as Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, and Chrome. HTTP for unsecured sites. Use the prefix HTTP colon forward slash forward slash where sites that are secured with various forms of encryption are HTTP secure or HTTP over SSL or simply HTTPS. They use the prefix HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash HTTP uses port 80 and HTTPS uses port 443 to check to see if a website is secure. Most browsers would display a closed padlock symbol right next to the website's address in the web address bar. Pop three. Post Office Protocol version 3 is an application layer internet standard protocol used by email clients to retrieve email from a mail server. Email is downloaded from the mail server to folders on a local system. For users who frequently switch between computers and or mobile devices, POP3 email is not a suitable solution for checking emails on multiple devices due to the email being downloaded onto only one device when the client device puts in a request. Users who utilize POP3 servers to retrieve email typically use SMTP to send messages. POP3 is the current version and standard and it uses port 110. IMAP. Internet Message Access Protocol is an internet standard protocol used by email clients to retrieve email messages from a mail server over a TCP IP connection. IMAP was designed with the goal of permitting complete management of an email box by multiple email clients. Therefore, clients generally leave messages on the server which can be retrieved from multiple devices from any location until the user explicitly deletes them. IMAP 4 is the current version of IMAP. To configure an IMAP-based email account, you must select IMAP as the email server type, specify the name of the server, give your username and password, and indicate whether the server uses SSL. IMAP uses port 143. NetBIOS or NetBT, so Network Basic Input Output System, where NetBT simply means NetBIOS over TCP IP, is a protocol that allows some legacy applications that were developed in 1987 before TCP IP became the standard to work on larger networks and the internet. NetBIOS uses ports 137 through 139. SMB CIFS, so Server Message Block, one version of which was also known as Common Internet File System or CIFS, is a network communication protocol for providing shared access to files, printers, and serial ports between nodes on a computer. It also provides an authenticated inter-process communication mechanism by way of using packets that authenticate remote computers. SMB uses ports 137 through 139 for SMB traffic using NetBIOS over TCP, and it uses port 445 for SMB hosted on TCP. CIFs were originally used as the standard method for sharing files via corporate intranets and the internet. CIFS has now been widely replaced by updated versions of SMB, such as SMB 2.0 and 3.0. SLP, Service Location Protocol. This is a service directory protocol that allows computers and other devices to find services in a local area network without prior configuration. SLP allows devices to provide their configuration information to hosts. SLP has been designed to scale from small unmanaged networks to large enterprise networks. SLP is used by devices to announce services on a local network, such as printer on the local area network. Prior to SLP, devices needed to have services specifically configured. SLP, it utilizes port 427.
AFP or Apple Filing Protocol. This is formerly known as Apple Talk Filing Protocol, and this is the proprietary network protocol, and it is part of the Apple File Service or AFS, and it offers file services for Mac and the classic Mac operating system. Apple Filing Protocol, it uses TCP IP for transport, and it utilizes port 548, Mac OS 10.9, or Mavericks, and newer versions versions use AFP to connect to devices running older versions of Mac and for Apple's Time Machine backup application. RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. This is a proprietary protocol developed by Microsoft, which provides a user with a graphical interface to connect to another computer over a network connection. The user employs RDP client software for this purpose, which is called Remote Desktop Services, while the other computer must run RDP server software, which is called Remote Desktop Connection. RDP uses port 3389. DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is a network management protocol used on IP networks where a DHCP server dynamically assigns an IP address and other network configuration parameters to each device such as PCs, printers, servers, routers, etc. on a network so they can communicate with other IP networks. The DHCP server enables computers to request IP addresses and networking parameters automatically from the ISP, reducing the need for a network administrator or a user to manage manually assign IP addresses to all network devices. In the absence of a DHCP server, a computer or other device on the network needs to be manually assigned an IP address or to assign itself what is called an APIPA address, which the latter of which will not enable it to communicate outside of its local area network. If you get your address from a DHCP server, you are getting your address assigned dynamically and it could change periodically. Some devices on the network require static addresses that do not change, such as printers and servers, which have to be assigned manually by a network administrator. This enables these devices to be more reliable and easily accessible over time. DHCP uses ports 67 and 68, where UDP port 67 is the destination port of a server, and UDP port 68 is used by the client. SNMP. So Simple Network Management Protocol is an internet standard for collecting and organizing information about managed devices on IP networks and for modifying that information to change device behavior. Devices that typically support SNMP include cable modems, routers, switches, servers, workstations, printers, etc. They are often incorporated into software known as Network Management Systems or NMS. The NMS is the main software in installed on a computer known as a manager that controls everything SNMP based. The devices to be monitored are known as managed devices. NMS installs a small piece of software known as an agent that allows the NMS to monitor those managed devices. SNMP uses ports 161 and 162. And finally, LDAP, so Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, is an open, vendor-neutral, industry-standard application protocol for accessing and maintaining distributed directory information services over an IP network. Domain directory services play an important role in developing intranet and internet applications by allowing the sharing of information about users, systems, network services, and applications throughout the network. As such, directory services may provide an organized set of records, often within a hierarchical structure, such as a corporate email directory. Microsoft refers to this as directory services. LDAP uses port 389. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some check on learning, shall we? First question is... Uh, a new ticket has come in requesting a server obtain network access to corporate email server. Which network port would apply? Would it be port 25? Would it be port 53? Would it be port 443? Or would it be 
port 22. So a new ticket has come in requesting a server obtained network access to the corporate email server. Which network port will apply? The correct answer is uh, port 25. Port 25 is used by the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol or SMTP, which can be used to send emails. Next question. David is installing a new web server at the office, but doesn't want DHCP giving it a new IP address every time he has to reboot it during maintenance. What kind of address should David assign to the new web server? Would it be static? Would it be dynamic? Would it be DNS or would it be DHCP. So he wants to install a new web server at the office, but he doesn't want it getting a brand new IP address every single time he has to reboot it. What type of address should he assign to this web server? The correct answer is going to be static. Static addresses are those that are manually assigned and entered on a device. This will effectively disable DHCP. And here's a tip. David should also reserve the IP address in the DHCP pool as good practice to prevent it from being leased to another device. And the final question is, in a Windows environment, this protocol is often associated with Active Directory for central management of a user database. What is this protocol called? Is it Exchange? Is it Domain Controller? Is it LDAP? Or is it Office 365? So in a Windows environment, this protocol is associated with Active Directory for centralized management of a user database. What is this protocol called? The correct answer is uh, LDAP. Lightweight directory access protocol often works in conjunction with Active Directory to provide user authentication and management in the network. It is the successor to the DAP or directory access protocol. Now, to answer this question really quickly, all you would have to have done was just look at the answers provided and realize that three out of the four answers have nothing to do with protocols. Exchange is the name of an email system. Domain controller has nothing to do with protocols. And Office 365 is just an online office suite in the cloud. LDAP is the only one that deals with protocols. In summary, we have talked about TCP and UDP ports, protocols, and their purposes. Now, if you feel like you got something valuable out of this, please go ahead and like, share, drop a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. And also go visit my website, technologyg.com, for more information so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.